We did a major reorganization of our campus makerspace over this past winter break, and we'll do a walkthrough and show all the changes and everything that we've done in a future video. But in the meantime, I wanted to show some of what we've been doing to organize tools on the wall with the French cleat wall organization system. French cleats use wood rails mounted to your walls and tools. Each rail has one edge ripped at a 45 degree angle, and the rails that are attached to the wall have the angle facing away from the wall, and the tools have that opposing rail that secures it and sort of pulls it into the wall. There's some nice advantages to using a French cleat system. You can design a rack or storage bin to fit in one spot and then easily move it anywhere else that you're using those French cleats as well. And so readjusting to make space for a new tool is pretty easy. In our case, if we know that a certain student project will use a lot of some key tools, we can make them easily available front and center. This also helps in cleanup since it takes no time to figure out where that specific tool should be put away. To hang a new tool, you'll first want to imagine how and where it should be oriented on the wall. We're trying to make it really obvious what goes where so our Makerspace users can clean up easily, so I'm going to experiment using a laser etched image of the tool in the spot where it should be placed. Using a scale image of the tool also can help in determining how to design the shelf or bracket itself. The shape of the tool might also dictate how to best capture it, but I found two methods uh, pretty successful so far in capturing those images. One being to photograph the tool on a white background, and the other one using a scanner to digitally capture the image. In the case of this cordless grinder, a profile photo was easiest to get, but keep in mind that you'll need to scale the image of the tool later to be accurate if you're going to be using that to help lay out your design. When using a scanner, it already keeps the view to scale, so importing the PDF into Photoshop lets me just start working right away without having to resize anything. Since we have a CO2 laser in our makerspace, and I plan to use it to make box joints for any of the connections between parts for our tool shelves, it makes sense to also etch these images onto the, uh, the shelves using the laser at the same time, as, uh, as well as making those precision cuts. So after tracing around the image and isolating it in Photoshop, I adjusted the contrast and brightness to work best for laser etching. It might look strange here, but if you think about how light and dark translate on the laser into shallow or deep etching, it makes more sense. The laser isn't going to care what the color variations are, it's just whether it's lighter or darker. And if you leave it too dark, it'll result in a muddier, kind of a cluttered look. After adjusting the tool image in Photoshop, I'm using a great free online tool at makeabox.io to make the box jointed connections. This shelf is one of the simpler tools to design for, but using this utility to generate the vector cut paths saves a lot of time because it can make box joints quickly and also take into account the curved size of the laser to help create tight-fitting joints really easily, and it's free. Uh, and so it's a good starting off point when I jump into Illustrator to edit those designs and then combine the cut paths with the visuals to be etched. But all of this digital imaging stuff is really optional. You could just as easily use a photocopy of the tool and then lay that paper down right on the wood and sort of trace out where you would want to be able to make your cuts and things like that. Or you could just lay the tool on the wood and trace around it as well. And then just use a bandsaw or a jigsaw to cut everything out. In our case, after we laser etched and cut the main base from quarter inch Baltic brush plywood and then cut out some supports for the handle from some 3 8 inch plywood, I shaped them a little bit with a flap disc sander before mounting them to the wood itself. And finally, I attached it to the French cleat wood strips and hit it with some spray poly to protect the wood. We think this organization approach is going to work out pretty well, and we'll share more later in another video when the organization is complete. If we think of any more tips worth sharing during that process, we'll share those too. If you have any suggestions for us that would help in our layout and organization, or if you see ways that we can improve on the techniques that we're using already, please share those in the comments below. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the updates and upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.